it's a very harrowing film and it brought back to me those times in the 1980s when we thought we'd got haemophilia under control with these new concentrated products that are convenient to use and then along came the realization that we'd infected most of our patients with deadly diseases and my own thoughts looking back to that time are if only we could have foreseen what would happen we would for sure have done things differently and I often think about patients who I gave treatment to with what I thought was the best treatment and who within 10 years were dead. I think it was a terrible time for everyone. Myself, I, by 1984, we'd cloned factor eight and been involved with the first steps towards a synthetic factor. And I left the Haemophilia Center in 1986 to work mostly on basic research, which um, eventually led into the gene therapy that is just now becoming a reality. So I, from a distance, heard about patients who were personal friends who had died and went to funerals, and it, it became an, a war zone. It, it was a, a, a time of the most terrible ongoing tragedy, as that film so vividly uh, portrays. I think it's a film that should be required viewing for uh, drug company executives in the field of blood products. Uh, we, we're always loading up the uh, syllabus for medical students, but it, it's a very important message to bear that as doctors, whilst trying to do our best for patients with our new technologies, there are increased risks and it should not be forgotten. And this thing will happen again, but we need to be alert to the possibility that we're making a mistake and be ever vigilant and take the most measures that we possibly can to be aware of uh, new threats and to keep safety at the forefront. Just, um, I think the commercial interest clearly outweighed best practice in safety. There are a number of points in that film that I hadn't been aware of before, like the continuing uh, failure to use a simple heat treatment when it had been shown that it was beneficial, and that the decision not to was, I would think, largely taken on commercial grounds that you could still sell a product and you didn't have to spend however many hundred thousand dollars it would have cost at the time to introduce a simple heat treatment. Pasteurization has been a very well known procedure throughout the um, pharmaceutical industry and it could have been introduced and it's a tragedy that it wasn't at the, at, as soon as it could have been. It is very difficult to be a paid consultant to a particular drug company and still keep completely independent.
independent in your thought. I know that because I have done consulting and for many here in the industry and the standards now are certainly better for declaring interest than they used to be. Uh, you have to be completely transparent with the total amount of money that you receive and the fact that you're on consultation boards. We, it's, it would be unusual for a very prominent um, researcher, medical doctor in the field, not to be engaged with the companies who are making the treatments that we use, even only in an advisory capacity. So, yeah, there can be conscious and unconscious bias. I wonder whether we, we, we definitely have better standards now. The hospitality is not so extraordinarily lavish as it used to be. I mean, it was overwhelmingly lavish uh, at various stages that I can recall. I wasn't so exposed to it when, because I took a very academic route. Uh, but I, I can see how it could influence people and what, why were they spending that money? Because they could gain influence with it. Oh, well, you would be going to the best at a conference on haemophilia. There would be the very best restaurants, the river cruises, the, all the uh, paraphernalia of uh, marketing products. Uh, it didn't go quite to the heights that it got in some areas with a bigger turnover, like the, um, let's say, cardiology and uh, gastrointestinal diseases, where people would go on cruises so-called for educational purposes and make hundreds of thousands of pounds out of it but um, it, it was it was remarkably lavish I heard something about this disappearance of records during the Penrose inquiries, in which I gave evidence, by the way. And the fact that his entire personal files had disappeared well before the time limits is suspicious to me. And he says he's not a conspiracy theorist, but it does look like part of a planned cover-up. It looks like. I would say it's a plausible explanation for why such a thing would happen. I think it deserves further investigation. And had Lord Owen's um, proposal for self-sufficiency gone through at that time, we'd have had a much lower rate of infection. There were opportunities best.